Yo, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of two... Two very attractive men. Uh, yes, we're going to think about and speak about our lives because uh, stuff has happened. A lot of stuff, stuff has happened. Stuff has changed since the last Fine Looking Brothers podcast. It was what was the New last? Year's was the la- New Year's was the last one. That was a, yeah, um, that was a great one. But uh, this It's funny, that was a week ago, but our lives have completely changed since then. I, I have lived an entire lifetime since that day. It's so weird because that this I realized um, the night of New Year's was literally the last night of last week's vlog. That's how close it was. Yeah, and... the, we were we were last time we were together. We saw Moana, Moana today last week. I saw Moana cereal at Target the other day. And did you cry in the middle of the store? Yes, I broke down in tears. I mean, why? Um, why Jesse? Why did you do this to me? I just wanted cereal. Yeah, so if you uh, if you like Moana, I wrote on my vlog an analysis of the movie. And I also wrote an analysis of its aesthetic, which just went up yesterday. So you have two Moana analysis pieces if you're interested. Go read them. My dad talked okay. about that blog post quite a bit. He read did it. Did your dad read my blog post? Yes. He also watched my mall video. It's so weird. <laughs> I hate when your parents call you about like stuff you made. It's because like I'm not making this for you. I'm yeah. making this for people like me. Yeah. Like exactly. Like my mom lectured me about the Moana piece, but what are you gonna do? She missed the point. Um, yeah. Anyway, like the whole point was that I wasn't saying that I'm not going to do the normie thing. I'm saying that I don't like it. <laughs> like. Like, I'm saying I accept this is what I have to do, so I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? You're not That's even going to sail the seas, Joshy? You're not going to leave, mm-hmm. follow it? What no, I'm going gonna, I'm to gonna, I'm gonna do that, but I have to, uh, I can't, I can't, uh, I could do that, but I have to come back every 10 minutes <laughs> for, for maintenance. <laughs> anyway, um, so we both moved into very interesting predicaments, so... You want to talk about it? Mm-hmm. Wait, I don't know what you're talking about, so you start. Okay. Uh, we both we both switched our living situation. Oh, yeah. Now back in Gainesville, which not too thrilled about, but eh, what are you going to do? I'm back in Gainesville, but for the first time, probably in my entire life, I am living in my own... Well, I'm sharing the apartment with a friend. But I have my own room and bathroom. So I'm pretty much living the, the adult life. Mm-hmm. And it's great. I love it. I can do whatever I want when I want to. And it's perfect. And I uh, moved to, to New York City. I'm living on my own in New York City with no, no line of support. Uh, yes. and it's it's going it's going pretty well. Did you start your job yet? No, not yet. It starts. Uh, Do you start tomorrow? No, I start okay. sometime this week. I got I gotta fill out some paperwork and stuff before I can actually start. Okay. But, uh, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do like a I'm gonna do like a mock uh, day where I where I, I take the subway into where my job is to see mm-hmm. where it is. You know, I'm gonna wake up early. That's what I did. Uh, that's what I did. Uh, when I had a job in DC. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then, you know what I'm going to do after? What? I'm going to walk to Book Off. And then book. I'm going to walk oh. to Kino Kunia. And I'm going so you're to like, my... your job is walking distance from Book Off and Kino Kunia? It's like a 20 minute walk. Do you know how, do you know how sick, radical, and twisted that is? Mm. To me, I don't understand people's, speaking of walking distance, people's perception of walking distance is interesting. Because my perception of walking distance is has drastically changed since being in D.C. Yes. Like, my perception of walking distance is 40 minutes or less. How about you? Mm-hmm. Like, if it takes 40 minutes or less to walk. If it's above that, then you have to take the other transportation. I mean, I'll, I'll take the subway if it if it is, like, significantly... If it's worth my time. Like, the subway is, like, yeah. less than three bucks. And if it's going to save me Let's half see. an hour of time, I'll take it. Yeah. Because that's my, my time is worth you know mm-hmm. more than six dollars an hour so like for me like 
to, to walk to where the building where all of my classes are from my apartment, it takes about a half an hour, like 25 to 30 minutes, depending on the day. So I could take a bus and a bus will take probably 15 minutes. But at that point, I'm just like, why not walk? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like I can just chill. I can listen to music. It's great. I like it. I mean, you can do that on a bus too, but like... It, but walking I don't have to like sit there crowded by like homeless people yeah. trying to watch out the window to make sure when I have to ring the bell if I can't reach the bell then I have to like get up and go around someone and reach the bell and it's just ugh. yeah I, I only do the bus when it's absolutely necessary yeah I don't like buses too much but I'll take the subway if it's a little bit faster and mm-hmm. um yeah I, I mean yeah walking distance I can walk anywhere that's about half an hour yeah but, um, like I, I barely ever have to walk somewhere that's half an hour. Usually it's faster to subway there. Yeah, the thing about uh, the thing about Gainesville is that I'm not 100 percent sure on the geography, but in my head, how Gainesville works is that there's this giant campus, and the crust around the campus is the town. That's my that's my in my head what it looks I'm, like, but it's yeah, probably I'm wrong. Sure I'm gonna look up a map of Gainesville right now. Me too. I'm interested. It's, it's, yeah, it's 45 degrees right now, so that's nice. Yeah, it's like 10. Oh, I think I may be right. Uh, how, how far out does University of Florida, like, um, oh, yeah, there's second in Charles. So, like, if you consider 2nd and Charles, like, still at, like, the edge of UF campus, it pretty much is. Okay. It's, I mean, it's, like, jerry- <laughs> gerrymandered a little bit uh, around some of the edges. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, Gain- Gainesville is an airport? Move. Yeah, it's small, though. That's interesting. I remember going there. I went there once because they were having that big flea market thing there. At the airport? But, um, yeah. But uh, there were, like, no people there. Like, I went in to go to the bathroom, and there was literally, like, there was, like, two people behind the counter, and there was no one in the airport. And it was, like, a weekend day. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. But um, anyway. I've been to a pretty small, like, one terminal airport before. They're, I like them. Yeah. yeah, like, don't move to Gainesville unless you have to. Like, <laughs> I mean, my apartment is nice, but it's just... Eh. <laughs> yeah yeah it's that kind of place Gainesville's but, kind um, of miserable it's not bad it's not it's not the worst place to live but you can do better for cheaper yeah um I'm living in Brooklyn though it's it's real cool I haven't gone like exploring very much but I'm looking forward to it so are you the man from brooklyn now? i'm i'm now the man from i've i've leveled up from the kid from boston to the man from brooklyn no i'm I, no i've leveled up from the the man from boston to the kid from brooklyn hey i'm the kid from brooklyn i'm a fat guy that's me <laughs> um so yeah one thing i've really enjoyed about being back here so i don't know if it's the co- new coffee maker i don't know if it's the coffee brand that i bought but the coffee ev- that i've made every single day has been some of the best hot coffee i've ever had in my life like dude it's just it's just wonderful i could have it black i could have it with a little bit of creamer and it tastes delicious and i don't know if that's just the new coffee maker the coffee brand but but yeah no one cares why am i even talking about this no i i, I cares know. I just don't drink, I just haven't been drinking coffee recently, so I don't have much to... Yeah, I've gotten to the point where, like, if I don't drink coffee, I feel like shit, so... I kind of have to. Usually, I'm up to, like, two or three coffees a day now, which is bad. Like, I'll drink a coffee, I'll drink probably, like, a coffee in the morning, a coffee midday, and if I don't have anything the next day, a coffee in, like, the afternoon or late afternoon or evening. Mm Mm-hmm. Which is a problem that... But uh, it's better than Red Bull. I'll give you that. I've quit Red Bull. <laughs> so I quick. I walk past Red. I've quit. I've walked past Red Bull vending machines every day. And it's hard, but uh, but uh, I will kill myself if I keep drinking Red Bull. It's probably like I quit Mountain Dew and I was all like high and mighty for quitting Mountain Dew, but then I got into Red Bull, which is probably worse. And 
Honestly, it's probably not worse. It's probably on like the same level. I mean, Hello. you know, I think you were so quick, so quick to quit Red Bull. Like, the amount of time you went from like, I'm starting Red Bull to I'm addicted to Red Bull to I've quit Red Bull was like five. Yeah, I started. Like I started week. like. I started no. I started Red Bull in. Uh, I started Red Bull like. Probably beginning of November. Oh really? Was when I f- I I think like so beginning like, of November. It was like two. Was months. when I first. Like, probably end of October is when I first had a Red Bull. I realized I liked it. They're delicious. Beginning of November is when I was get, started getting a Red Bull every day. And then, uh, over the course of, like, November and most of December, I was drinking Red Bull pretty regularly. And then I decided to quit end of December. So, uh, here I am. Nice. Because I realized if I do it for longer, it'll become like Mountain Dew again, where I'm addicted to a substance for years and I have withdrawal symptoms. I didn't have many withdrawal symptoms from this. So. You had withdrawals from Mountain Dew? Oh yeah, well, big it's, time. It, there's, no, there's nothing like physically addicting in it though. But if you keep on consuming a substance multiple times a day, every day for like a couple of years, you, it's gonna be weird to get off of it. And it's not like it's not like I'm shaking, right? I just like feel like, you know what I mean? Like I'll like be like, oh, gravitated towards it, where I'm just like, oh, I want it, oh, I need it, like you know what I mean? It's yeah. like a draw, but then um, after a couple of weeks, it goes away. Don't don't get addicted to something unhealthy. At least coffee is not that bad for you. I mean, it's natural substance. Like, it's... you just crush up coffee beans and put it in water. I well, you run water through it, yeah. But like, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking of I'm probably gonna get a get like a French breast or something. I have like a full there's a full kitchen downstairs. Like it's got eight stoves. Eight stoves. But you have to share it. I do, but it's like empty most of the time. Yeah. So I can just My kitchen walk down nice. and make a fucking bagel every morning if I want. Um continue talking about your breakfast routine while I go to the bathroom. I I'm going to not do that. I'm instead... Talk about whatever you want. Go Talk out. about whatever you want. I'll be right back. <laughs> I, f- uh, there's, I just found a list of um, the... <laughs> Actually, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till Josh gets back <laughs> to read this off. But like, my I don't know. My breakfast routine is like... I just found this really great uh, bagel shop because I live in Brooklyn now. So... Uh, there's, I mean, there's so many bagels around. There's one, like, less than five-minute walk from me. I can just go get half a dozen, eat it for a week, uh, for breakfast. It's, and, oh my god, I'm so happy. I'm gonna do it every week so much. Josh, I'm gonna send you, uh... I'm back. Josh, I just sent you a list of, uh, of... (laughs) Of baby names for 2017, I would like for us to read through them. <laughs> okay, okay. Hopefully, it doesn't stop the recording, but let's do this. Oh, you want me to send it on? This? No, it, it, it's it's recording. It's recording. Oh, okay. 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 Um, it's one of the first and most significant decisions made by any new parents: what name to give their new bundle of joy. Uh, Why don't you just read it? Yeah. Step forward. Uh, step forward. Champagne quaffing. I society loving Tatler magazine. It's positive baby names list. All right. Do it. Go. <clears throat> Alright. <clears throat> For girls. Alfreda. Zar- <laughs> <laughs> Alfreda Blanche. Zarzar. This is spelled C Z A R. Is this is this like click hole or something? I, like I can't tell. <laughs> Debonair. Estonia. Figgy. <laughs> this has this is this is a parody article. Get get Semaine. Hum. Itabel. Not Isabel, Itabel. Jory. <laughs> <laughs> Koala. <laughs> yeah, this is fake. Lark. Monavine. Nancy. Opal. <laughs> Power. 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 Queenie. Queenie. <laughs> Rara. Scar. Tansy. I'm crying. Una and Vervain. Uh, Wendy. Xanth. Yellow and Xenia. All right, we Perfect. now now we're on to the boys. <clears throat> oh, that was just the girls. Yes, oh, right, I'm gonna name see. my daughter Scar. <laughs> Scar Newman. All right, um, <clears throat> boys, Aubin, Barclay, Casser, David, 
Euripides, Fenston, Gustav, Hickman, <laughs> Innsbrush, John, Kenneth, Luglo, Mao. Uh, <laughs> what? Are you reading along with this? No. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to spell it out. Um, N-P-E-T-E-R, pronounced Peter. <laughs> N-P-E-T-E-R. <laughs> the N is silent. <laughs> or Murad. This is this is this is like an onion or click hole thing, right? Prince, quail, <laughs> <laughs> raw like the wind dragon of raw. Okay. Sorton, Titus, U- Uxorius, Victory, <laughs> Wig, <laughs> what? Wigbert, <laughs> X Man. <laughs> X Man. Okay. Yak. <laughs> Yak and Zebedee. What website is this? I, I Bristol Post. I, it has to be. I fake. cannot tell if this is real. Okay. I haven't checked. I haven't checked the rest of the site, but this has to be a joke. I agree. Yeah. Zebedee. <laughs> so what do you want to talk about now? Um... I want to talk more about these baby names. Uh, I don't know. It's, uh, no in all seriousness, I'm probably gonna, what are you gonna name your baby, Zach? I'm not gonna have a baby. I'm probably gonna have a kid at some point. <laughs> and, and Peter. <laughs> I'm gonna name him Peter with an N. <laughs> Is it weird that I want a kid? Because it, it's a very selfish reason. I want to, like, craft my ideal person from the ground up. That's that's absolutely horrible. That's a, that's <laughs> like, a terrible wanna, thing to do. Please. Like, I want to, like, I want to uh, <laughs> build someone that would be my favorite person. Please don't do that. Then you end up just projecting what you want them to do onto them. And you ruin their life because they're like, I don't want to be like you, Dad. Did I tell you about the thing I came up with a couple of years ago that I realized is like the ho- most horrible thing ever? What is it? Tell me on the podcast it's, uh, for everyone it's... to hear. Okay, okay. So this is this is, this was my strategy a few years ago because like a few years ago I was very uh, toon elitist. I like to call it where I thought modern cartoons were all bad and old cartoons were all good. Which is not true, but this is how I felt a couple years ago. Okay. And I was like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, like, trick my kid by I'll always have DVDs of, like, the good cartoons that we grew up with in the DVD player and just constantly play them and put fake commercials in the middle so it, like, I think <laughs> it's, like, real TV. But, um, so I was going to do that. And then, like, they'd go into school and, like, be talking about my sh- our shows to, like, people that don't even know what they are. And, like, they'll be like, wait, what's going on? Why don't we have the same TV as you guys? And then they'll slowly, like, come to realize that I've been brainwashing them this entire time. That's horrible. Yeah, it is horrible. But I can't, I probably came up with, like, middle school or early high school. But, uh... Yeah, definitely don't do that. And there's also a lot of great animated shows right now. So, you shouldn't do that. Oh, oh, little Wigbert. I'm gonna brainwash (laughs) you. (laughs) <laughs> Wigbert. That's my Wigbert. <laughs> no, my name, my kid's name. What's the one with the J in front of it? The silent J. No, the silent oh, N. It's... Peter. <laughs> I was gonna say his name N P E T E R. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, what else is Wigbert? Uh, fucking Wigbert. I love. Uh, I love. That's legit. I legitimately love the name Wigbert now. Oh yeah. Um, Wigbert was his t- name, nigga. Wigbert was his motherfucking name. <laughs> Tayo Khan and Mesa is happening right oh now. Oh my god, it's it's. I wish mm. I was there. Uh. So just I think this is the best way to describe this sentence. I think describes it all. Rocco Bodhi of Mega sixty four last night was at a impromptu Teddy Lloyd concert in the <laughs> hotel lobby of Tayo Khan in Mesa. It's it's just like a mini Japan. Hi hi. <laughs> it is though, oh, right? Oh my god. Where else would Teddy Lloyd perform an impromptu <laughs> lobby concert? <coughs> and and Sorry, Derek would get up on stage and go Nico Nico Ni. 
<laughs> you know they hosted the entire uh the entire masquerade this year i'm i'm sure so many people are so much happier now that they've seen mega 64 host a masquerade apparently uh Rocco spent like 20 minutes reenacting a scene from like <laughs> From like a castaway or something. Yes. On stage. Didn't didn't he say in the tweet he's like, you cut out the la- <laughs> you cut out the next forty five minutes of this performance. I I just love the idea of Rocco for like forty five minutes reenacting a scene from like some dramatic movie on stage. I am sure I am sure we will see that video surface at some point. <laughs> Reminds me of uh, anime kanji. Except they're gonna get invited back to this one because everyone loves them. Yeah. Anime Kanji, if you have not seen uh, Mega64 before, go watch their Anime Kanji panel. I think that's that's a good start, right? Yes, it's it's probably one of the greatest things on YouTube. Yeah, I put it, like, I'm, I'm considering making, like, a top, like, a playlist or, like, a piece on, like, my top, like, 20 or 10 YouTube videos of all time. And uh, I gotta do a weird number, actually. Top, like, 16, maybe. Um, that sounds like a good and, amount. Yeah, so I'll just, like, do, like, and that will definitely be on there. Um, Radcon 2 is also happening right now. It was funny, because, like, time goes by so fast. Now, like, like it feels like Radcon, the original one, was, like, a month ago. Yeah, it literally feels like a month ago. It was half a year ago. <laughs> it was last August. It, yeah, it doesn't feel like it's time for the next Radcon, but it is. Yeah, but it... But think about it, in their lives, it must have been really slow. Like, because for us, we were constantly busy, so it went, it feels, it's weird, because remember how we were, we were back in Florida, like, last week, and we were talking about how the summer felt like, like, two weeks before that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I felt like we were just on summer. This, this 20, 2016 was hands down the fastest year. Yep. No year has been and faster. None. Have you ever seen a year so fast? Um. <laughs> oh yeah, so I was at Chabad. Okay. I have a story. I was at Chabad, and uh, I met I met so this guy. I met this guy. He was pretty cool. We were talking. So he sat next to us at dinner, right? Fine. Mm-hmm. He in the middle of the middle of thing. We're all talking. He asks me if uh, what's the word? What's the, what's the thing? Ah, uh, no, I'm forgetting the line. This joke's ruined. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, give me a second so I can like prepare the jokes. Uh, is it something for Kurt? No, no. Uh, here we go. This is this is what he he looks to me and he asks, "Are you a real villain? Are you a real villain?" And I'm like, I'm like, oh uh, no. Did you just go? And then he proceeds to read the entire lyrics of the first part, and then he proceeds to say like the chorus part without any melody. Just tell me it. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like, and this is like, this is like a normie guy. He's not like us. He's like, he's like, you know, like, Man. like, you know what I mean? Yeah, this, this I'm story. Like, I'm like, I'm so happy right now. This story is going down in history. No, it's going down in trickery. No, it's going down in history. It's a lesson in trickery, Joshy. It's a lesson in history. It's a... This is going down in trickery. This is going down in trickery. If you want to um, be a villain number fun, you have to chase a superhero. There was stuff the I wanted to talk about that I'm forgetting now. And now I can't remember it. Just follow but, uh, my lead and sneak maybe around. Maybe I'll remember it by the be end. Be careful not to make a sound. Shh. No, don't touch that. Anyway, um, I got to get a video uh, done and out today. I have not uh, started audio recording. Are you hinting that you want to end the podcast? No, I'm not. We're only 24 okay. minutes in. Oh, okay. Then yeah, we could go for a long time. Anyway, current current season anime. Usually, what happens is I'll start a bunch and uh, and uh, end up only watching like one. But uh, last season, I didn't even finish the one I was going to watch all the way through. Which one? I was going to watch Flip Flappers all the way through. I watched the first two episodes, and I'm like, "This is great. I'm going to finish it," and I forgot about it. So I got to <laughs> watch that like separately now. Nice. But um, anyway, two sh- th- I watched two shows so far this season, and I'm going to continue them both. And uh, I watched Fug. Akiba's Trip. I watched Akiba's Trip, which is trash. It's a, it's like, 
I, I think Code Provider put it perfectly in his video. Uh, I haven't watched it yet. Actually, no, I did watch it. No, wait, did I? I don't even remember. But it's it's it. His title is Otaku Cancer. Akiba Strip <laughs> Episode One. I feel like that's and the I point, like, though. I yeah, like it's 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 a very self-aware show. Like it knows that this is literally garbage. Like it's it's just trash. But it's it's like fun to watch. You know what I mean? Hashtag fun to watch. Yeah, hashtag fun to watch. So I'm gonna finish that show probably. And actually, a genuinely show that I really enjoyed. Had, a, had some problems, but I really enjoyed it. Was Fuka? I like the title, Fuka. It sounds like a, it sounds like a curse word. You know what I mean? Fuka, Fuka. It sounds like yeah. uh, it sounds like suka in in Russian. What's suka mean? Uh, fuck or something. Fuck. I think it's anyway. I think it's the equivalent. Oh fuck. Anyway. Suka. Uh, Fuka's pretty. I like it a lot. I don't know. Doesn't have the best animation, but uh. I really like the characters. I I just re- I relate to the protagonist a lot, even though he's he's like he's like a I didn't know this was possible, but he's like a wimpier version of me. I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> I didn't know it could get wimpier than me, but uh, apparently it does. So, but I don't know. I, I relate to him a lot, and um, he's he's pretty cool. Um, the girl on the show is pretty awesome too. Uh, her name is Fuka, hence the title of the show. And I like all the characters, honestly. And it has a good story. I like it. It's a little tropey in the beginning, but uh, it gets original from there. And, um, yeah. It's good. I enjoy it. Uh, Code said it's the worst thing he's ever seen, and he almost cried about how bad it was. <laughs> but, uh, but, I don't know. I understand. All his points are valid. Everything he said makes sense. But, I don't know. I enjoy it, so fuck that. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Code Provider. Um, I'm just kidding. I love code provider is great. Thank, hey, code, if you're listening, I love you. Yeah. Um, I also finally watched Shelter. Really? Yeah. What and I think? did you see it? Yeah. Did you watch it? I didn't think it was that good. I, I thought I it was good. It. I didn't think it was great, like everyone's saying. I'm like, oh, like this is. I predicted the whole thing, like. I'm like, oh, she's clearly it's like, like a couple minutes long. I didn't, I didn't predict that she was in space. Spoilers. I predicted that she was in like it was post-apocalyptic, and her caretaker put her in this thing to save her life. I, like I predicted that all right away, but it was it was pretty good. Um, best thing A1 Pictures has ever produced. Probably yes, because they didn't actually write it; they just animated it. Okay, yeah. Um, song was pretty good too. So is this like a Japanese artist or an American artist? Uh, who Porter Porter Williams or what's yeah, name? Porter Robinson. Porter that, Robinson. Yeah. I don't think he is. I think he's just a he's just a dude. Nah, he's uh he's American. Okay, that's pretty cool. Madion um, is not uh Japanese either. I don't think. No, he's uh French. Okay, but yeah, I liked um, it was it was good. What do you think? <laughs> I think I think what happened to the shelter girl is a tragedy, and humanity needs to pay the price. Anyway, uh, I agree. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was it was something. I I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was. I thought it was better than uh you know the the PCP's opinion of it, but it wasn't the greatest thing ever. Oh yeah, I know. Uh, I know. What we were, we should probably talk about. What is it? It's gonna take a while. We n- we never really went into detail about Moana at all. Moana. I mean, I do have a whole analysis talking about exactly what we felt, so you should probably go read that. But I think we could talk about it too. Um, my favorite Disney movie. Not including Pixar, but yeah. Would you say so? Yeah. Uh. Well. I uh, I don't know. I don't re- really remember what my favorite Disney movie is, so I guess I could say it's my favorite. Yeah. Uh, it was good. It's, it will mess you if you are anything like us. It will mess you up. See, I'm like I'm a, I'm emotionally damaged. So this movie, like, like I still me. think about it. I still think about it. Like to like, it it screwed me up a little bit. I set aside money, so I'll get it when when it comes out on Blu-ray and DVD. 
But uh, I think it'll be a cheaper Blu-ray because you know, popular movie. It's Disney though. Well, you could like Disney movies are still full price. No. Is 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 Finding Dory by Disney? Pixar. Pixar. But Pixar is owned by Disney. Yeah, so, but yeah. those were like ten bucks. On Black Friday. Well, yeah, but like. <laughs> anyway, they'll still go yeah, on gonna, sale. Yeah, I'm gonna get a more when it comes out. Um, if I wrote my uh, top four movies of 2016 later, it would probably be. I would probably have done top five, and it would probably be. Uh, probably four. Really? You liked three movies this year better than Moana? Yeah, I'd say um, This House Has People in It, Kimi no Noah, and uh, Arrival. Okay. That's fair, right? Yeah, I thought you were saying this is like one of your favorite movies of all time. Nah, it's not one of my favorite movies of all time. It's one of my favorite Disney movies. It's definitely in my, like... I, see, the thing is, it is... It, I could say it is one of my favorite movies, but everything above it was also one of my favorite movies, too. Okay, fair enough. For de- I don't have any favorite movie. I have, like, a hundred favorite movies. You know what I mean? I guess if I had to pick one, it would be Spirited Away. But, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I can't pick one. There's too many good ones. Yeah. And I like, I like all of these for different reasons, but, so I can't really, like, say one's we, better than the other. Did we talk about why we actually like Moana yet? <laughs> no, we didn't. Um, uh, because I like it because it, it's good. It's a great movie. Yeah. So, it's literally like, the whole moral of the movie is like, fuck society, fuck the social norms, the structural way of fuck life, and government. just do what you want, the and do what you, what's in your heart. And that's the point of the movie. Fuck the government, because I don't give a fuck. And it literally, it messed me up because i talk about this in my analysis but it's like yeah i'm i'm I'm, i have passion i have something i want to do but i can't do it as a full-time career yet so what i have to do is do the normie trajectory and uh and do like a normie job i'm gonna try to get the least normie normie job possible but uh i'm gonna try to just apply to like all the websites i like and see what i get but um but uh, yeah, until until I get enough money, either from my book or from to live on my own and write books full time, I'm gonna have to do crap. And that's how about you? You think the same thing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the only difference is I don't know what I want to do, but I do know what I don't want to do, and I don't want. I mean, do that's a start though. See, that's a good thing to know though. I want to sail. Yeah. I want to sail the seas on a raft, go past the reef, get action. <laughs> that should be the theme. Of all. It's like we should do it. AM, we should do it every day. <laughs> we should do it. AMV. Should do get action. <laughs> oh my god! This is this is happening. We're doing it. Fake news are right? looking at me like don't know what I'm doing. When I'm pulling inside a reef for creativity since 2013. Not me. When you see me, what do you think? That guy's just great. He doesn't count. He's an outlier anomaly. Surely got lucky somehow. Okay. But yeah, we are doing that. That is a project in the works now. Okay. It, we are in deep pre-production right now. So. I, have, I have said I have said I'm going to get a video out every every week, every weekend this year, and I have not put out a video this year yet other than an update. So. Well, it's only the first. This, was only, this is only the first weekend. Yeah, but this is the weekend. It needs to get done today. So I need to just finish do that. It. I do. You yeah. won't. I will. I will. F- fuck you. Fuck oh, you. Uh, I will. I'll that's do it. something else I want to talk about. So <laughs> Digi, all these years, has been recommending the YouTuber Matthew Matosis. And I haven't wanted to watch. He says start with his Zelda reviews. And he reviewed, like, he did Ocarina of Time, Win- Majora's Mask, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and Skyward Sword. I didn't want to watch them because they're literally like 45 minutes long each. Each of his reviews. But yesterday, I was sick. I had nothing else to do. I finally binge-watched all of them. And Matthew Matosis is a genius, and they're amazing. Well, they're in, they're more analysis than reviews. They're just called reviews, so they get more clicks. But uh, Are they objective reviews, though? No. 
they are I not see, I, I don't like this review because it's not objective. <sighs> Fuck. Reviews aren't... Mm. If you're writing or... I'm gonna, if you I'm want gonna an objective thing... Down. If you want... This is what I have to say to people that want objective reviews. Like, if you want... A review isn't an objective medium. A review is... I am sharing my opinions on a piece of media. Mm-hmm. That's what a review is. That's what the definition is. If you want to like objective, just read an article stating facts about a thing. Like a Wikipedia like a news page. Article. A Wikipedia page. That's how you're going to get objective. If you, if, you want, if you want objective, do that. But if you want a review, you're going to get someone's opinion. That's how it works. And I don't understand people say they all need to die. Kill them all. <laughs> Kill all of them. Fuck them. Twenty seventeen. It's over. It's over. Like, but yeah. So go watch. Uh, go watch uh, Matthew Matosa's reviews. He says you need to watch them in order. I don't think you do. Like you can watch whatever if you will. Like, like it's weird because I watched. Uh, he says watch Ocarina of Time first, but I watched Wind Waker first because that's my favorite game of all time. And then I went and watched everything else in order, and I watched Wind Waker again during the order. So, you could do whatever what do you want, but they're really good. And if you're a fan of Zelda, he, like, what I like is that he makes the point, like, so well that I always say, like, just because I'm pointing out everything wrong with this thing and bashing everything I don't like, like, like all the problems and making all the problems evident doesn't mean I don't like it. Like, he's like, I love all of these games, even though I'm, like, only talking about bad stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I feel like you you tend to talk about bad stuff more when something's really good, because if something's bad, you just don't want to talk about it. You know what I mean? You're just like, you're just like, eh, it's bad. Here's what's bad. That's it. If you're like pointing don't out little things that can be improved, yeah. If you're pointing out little things that can be improved, you definitely like it. But um, yeah. It made he he helped me to realize why everyone didn't like Skyward Sword, and because it sucks. It did. It did. It's a it's a bad game. I like it, but uh, I never actually beat it. I just like the story, and the story's good, but the game is bad. I'm just scared. I'm scared. Breath of the Wild's gonna be like Skyward Sword. I don't like the. I don't like the stamina oh, meter. See, see Sky, Skyward Sword. The thing about Skyward Sword is that it presented itself as this big open world thing, but it actually ended up being not. It ended up being like, like this. This like extremely linear like there's literally only four areas in the game like the sheet pointed out that really these are there's literally only four areas of the game and you go back to each of these areas three times uh-huh. that's how the game works no i mean there's only yeah there's there's skyloft there's the forest area there's the uh the volcano area and there's the desert area and you just go back to those areas three times and that's how the game works there's no exploration or anything and the biggest part of zelda to me is exploration and I think, like, hopefully Breath of the Wild goes that way. What do you think? I think... I'm, I mean, I'm hopeful for Breath of the Wild, but, uh... I'm, I'm a little, uh... I'm waiting, I'm waiting till reviews come out to get it. Like, I'm not gonna get the Nintendo Switch until Breath of the Wild comes out. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just hope it's not shit, <laughs> like... Yeah, like, it's... Like the thing is, it's definitely my most anticipated game of the year. But like, like I can't think you, of any other game that I want to play more than that this year. Or any other game I want to play this year, period. You, you know, like you know, Skyward Sword got like raving reviews when it came out because it's a Zelda game, and then people slowly realized. I, I think I remember. I re- I remember vividly IGN's review of Skyward Sword where they clearly had not played past the first like two hours of the game, uh-huh. like. All of the footage in their review was from the the first area, <laughs> and I'm like, you didn't even beat the game, you can't review it. It came out like the day the game came out, and it got a million views because they gave Skyward Sword a ten out of ten, game of the year. And then it actually and sucked. It actually sucked. If you would have played past the first two hours, you would have seen that. But uh, every other game they talked about is amazing. Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Wind Waker, and Twilight Princess are all ten out of ten masterpieces. Yeah, I get vouched for this first all. three. I don't know. I never played Twilight Princess. I didn't like the Wii version. Twilight Princess. Twilight Princess has some problems, but it's still amazing. But I think the the only real problem with Twilight Princess is that the there is a two hour pro tutorial. Yeah. Prologue. Never got past. And that. they need to pace that better. 
instead of just teaching you everything in two hours, a two-hour chunk, they should teach you it throughout the game when you need it. Oh, like Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, the second greatest like game ever every, created. Like every other Zelda game ever. <laughs> well, no, some of the, most of the Zelda games don't even teach you anything. You just learn it. See the, yeah, see, the thing about, like, Wind Maker is a good example. Like, Wind Maker, the, like, the, pro, the tutorial island is, like, if you know what you're doing, it's, like, 20 to 30 minutes. No, it's short. At, it's way shorter than that. It's shorter. It's probably, like, 15, 20 minutes, I'd say. Yeah. Like, if, so, if you could, if you have, like, like, mm-hmm. see, like, if you have basic, like, critical thinking skills, you can get off that island in 15 to 20 minutes and start the rest of the game. Yeah. That's, that's, uh... Twilight Princess, no matter how smart you are, it will take two hours. <laughs> yeah. Uh... And that's dumb. <laughs> it's stupid. But after that, it's a 10 out of 10 masterpiece game. Yeah. So it's uh, worth Sun, it. Sun and Moon has the really long tutorial, too. I don't like it, but the game's good, so whatever. Sun and Moon's still... Oh, that's what I want to talk about, Sun and Moon. How I've been playing Sun and Moon. I I'm just started the third island. Um, no spoilers. I don't know what's going to happen, but I am pretty sure this is literally the plot of Kill a Kill. And that uh, Team Skull is going to be like Satsuki and Jakuza and her people. I so, think, like, I think Team Skull uh, is literally, like, th- like Satsuki's people. Yeah, I think right? you're, like, I think like you're the, way closer than you imagine with that yeah, analysis. It's, team Skull is literally Satsuki's people, and they're going to team up with Ryuko slash the main character. And they're going to fight Revox slash the Aether Foundation, <laughs> who's led by Ragyo, which is the same character. Like, Wait, like, what, is, character what is Aether will... spelled backwards? Uh, let me spell it out and read it. It's Revox. Reefe? <laughs> it's Revox. Okay, um, so my thing is, uh, my thing is, like, she walks out, and in my head I hear Ragnos theme. I'm like, do do I'm pretty sure she has a like theme, the, too. And it's, like, this weird, like, yeah, it's similar sounding. Like, the same, it's the same, like, sound font, similar sound font, they, but different melody. They really should have just used Blumenkrantz, like. Yeah. And so... And I don't understand how, like, like, and it, as soon as they go up the elevator into the place, and it's the same hallway that Lily was being chased in at the beginning of the game, I'm like, oh. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I was right, 100%. Uh-huh. It's, it's like, I can't tell if the game's predictable or if I've just seen too many anime and played too many games before. I think it's, I think it's just predictable. Like, Pokemon yeah. games aren't known for their, uh, their, cr- their, like, criticism or their, yeah. uh, But, uh, I really, is. I really liked it. It's, uh, I still really like it so far. It's probably, I'd say, one, I haven't finished it yet, so I can't make the judgment, but I'd say it's probably my number two behind uh, Hoenn. I did uh, I did really enjoy that uh, that third island, and I'm excited for the fourth one when I get there. I am just got to the third island, so I have a lot of fun ahead of I me. I just left the third, and I'm, I'm approaching the fourth, and I have, like... I assume there's going to be, like, a whole part of the game before you finish where you go and have to, like, infiltrate the Aether Foundation and, like... Do all the stuff. Is that not like what you're doing Pokemon. right now? Like, we're, like in every Pokemon game, where you have to like, you know, go back, the, fight the the story and stuff that happens the... between islands. Yes, that does indeed happen. Yeah, but you know, you know what I'm saying. You're like, there's always like that part of the game where you have to stop your like challenge. You're like elite, like you're like like you know like gym challenge or whatever, and go like to the, fight the team in their headquarters. Is that not what you're doing right now? No. What do you mean? Oh, you're you're just you're just touring, right? They bring yeah. You they just toured. It. Nothing really happened. Yeah. Except for that weird creature, and then uh, then we went dropped us off at the third island. Yeah. And then I saved and turned it off because I was tired. Nice. But um yeah um. I don't know if this is just me and I'm a shitty gameplay person, but I found this this um I have to do if I want all of my team to be equal level I have to do a lot of grinding. I, I found myself like. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, but I all I do is fight every trainer. I don't like fight wild Pokemon or anything. And you see, I'm, I spent the past week playing a little bit every day, like probably playing like a half an hour every day, fighting just nothing but wild Pokemon. Why? Because like, it's not. Let's it's say not okay. Worth let's it. say one, it's not worth it. I'm like 15 levels over leveled, and okay. I've just fought every trainer. See, what I, what I realized is that I had too many Pokemon too early in the game. I didn't pace myself. I had, like, six Pokemon right away. 
So wow. that that was my problem. I got rid of I got rid of two by Pokemon, and from then it's been much easier. Yeah. So I think I think they pace it so you, they sort of pace it so you should get a new team member at every island. That's what I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, about there. I just got my fifth team. Like member. The, you get your like first your starter and a second on the first island, and then you get a third on the, the second island, and you get a fourth on the second island, and you get fifth on like the last. I, that's what I'm guessing yeah. how they're pacing it. I'm still, so I have four right now. I'm still it, looking it for my uh, my Shua Junction. Or not, no, my, my Western Juku Junction. I don't know who it's going to be. Yeah, I, at this pace, I'll probably beat the game within the next two weeks, I'm guessing, if I don't have a lot of work. I think it's, I think so, the second half is longer. Oh, uh, okay. It is, it is a very long Pokemon game, I've noticed. Yeah, definitely. I don't know if that's because I'm grinding a lot, or because it's just a longer game. I mean, I'm not, I'm not grinding very much, I'm just taking my time with doing everything. And uh, yeah. I'm I'm yeah I'm 24 I'm over 24 hours in. And, like uh, usually with like Pokemon games I'm very streamlined where I'll be like okay I can do that my second time playing through the game or I can do that after I beat the game but now I'm like stopping like okay let's see what this guy wants me to do and stuff like that like so I'm doing a lot of side quests and stuff like that yeah so it's a it's a fun game I like it a lot me too I'm gonna go play best it. game oh. of 2016 only game I played in 2016 man you you've made me really want to play it oh I played another game since uh since the last time we talked what'd you play I played uh glitter mitten grove oh Maka. yeah how was glitter mitten grove you gotta send me that it's it's uh oh man it's it's a really good pretty hard pretty hard game uh really enjoyable though I beat it in two days uh so it's not very long. Well, it's, um, it's def- definitely something. Yeah, it's Glitter Man Grove, a new original game that isn't connected to any franchise. Yes, indeed. It's really cool. It's a game about managing fairies. How much? How much screaming is there in that game? Screaming. Is uh, there twenty-two 20, screaming yeah, 22. entities? There's twenty-two screaming things. Okay. Did you see Code Provider's newest video? No. I just that? like. Like, usually what I do is, like, when I'm talking on the podcast, I'll, like, click random things on my computer, just, like, I don't know. I'm gonna check. And look at the icon. I don't know what the thing is, but the, just the title and the icon. I'm checking, I'm checking on my YouTubes, on the YouTubes, on the onlines, for, for an ever, ver, forever world versus double four anime. <laughs> it's a picture of, who is that on the left? Some, like, like, some, like, anime critic that's, like, famous on YouTube. This is wonderful. I don't know who the... Is that Donald Trump on the right? It, I think it is, yeah. And then it's code in the middle. Like, <laughs> yes. I'm not going to watch it now. It's 22 minutes, but, uh... Is... I feel like there's other stuff. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Uh... Not really. Um... I think that's about it. Yeah... In think so too. Thanks go, for watching. Go, uh, go read my Moana analysis pieces on joshuaidon45.wordpress.com. They're good. See you guys next time. And